So Chuck Briggs was just one of those things. You guys, any of you had an opportunity to meet or talk to any of the Apollo astronauts? And if so, what was that conversation about? That there have been quite a few, and actually one of the really neat things is to just compare and contrast and to listen to them talk about some of the lessons they learned and trying to make sure that they've instilled those in us. And so it's been really neat to have a chance to, to overlap. But it's funny, one of the things that they remind us is that a big recommendation coming out of Apollo was to not land in the water. So you know, <laughs> some of them we got, some we didn't get. Hi, Jenny Halpern, Super Cluster. Uh, what's the most difficult part of training for this mission? Well, you know, as Marie talked about, a lot of the mission is very, uh, training is very focused. So we really get to focus just on the spacecraft and those filling the nine days and the different activities we'll have. So in that respect, you could say that it's less complex than ISS training. But where the complexity comes in for me, especially, and I think for everyone, we've talked a lot about this, is that this is a developmental mission. We are going to not only be training, we're going to be figuring things out with the team as we go, and we have to really embrace the uncertainty there. The fact that there is not a potted plan that's just going to be fed to us, and the, the hoops that we're jumping through are not well known. We, we're going to be inventing it as we go, and that's a challenge, but it's also the exciting part of what we're doing. So, although it may be the most complex part, it's what we're looking forward to. Thank you. Uh, good morning, and this is for each one of you. A lot of us as, as children want to be policemen, firemen, doctors, lawyers. Are you doing today what you wanted to do as a youngster? So in my case, I absolutely was inspired by the Apollo missions even before that they happened before I was born. And uh, I set that goal of being a space explorer. I trained, changed my treehouse into a spaceship and started going on space missions as a kid. And so I dreamed of something like this. It's absolutely and I'm actually in the same boat. I don't remember a time when I didn't want to be an astronaut. It was something I told my very early teachers and family about, and I was really fortunate because no one discouraged me. Everyone just encouraged that dream. And actually coming here to Kennedy Space Center when I was young, maybe around 10, really solidified things because suddenly I had something to actually sink my teeth into. I had seen real things, and it became a lot more real at that point. And it's an honor to be able to live out that dream. No. Uh, I wanted to play pro football, and my father was a police officer, so I wanted to do something that was service to my community. And so, you know, when I think about what I loved about team sports, it was being a part of a, a really dynamic, really great team that was accomplishing a really important mission together, and then also public service. So I, even though I'm not doing the specific job I wanted to do as a child, the aspects of it that were meaningful, I think I get to do that now. I fall right in that same same boat as as a like as a five year old I wanted to drive trains and then as I grew up I wanted to fly planes and then as I got to in my teenage years I wanted to join the military and serve the, the nation that I loved and then I saw a space shuttle launch when I was a Navy pilot and that the rest was history. Oh there was a Oh, yeah. uh, Reed, I have a question for you and then a question for, for all of you if you don't mind. And I guess, Reed, my question for you is, now that you all are about four, four and a half months into training, what is one area now that you, you want to spend more time training on that perhaps uh, you didn't think of at the beginning of this, now that you've kind of dug into the training a bit more? Uh, I think we, we've just started human in the loop testing where we're getting to actually operate the simulator, operate the spacecraft the way it was designed. I think when you start to just taste that, I didn't expect how much I would love just being in there and operating this spaceship that you see behind us. Uh, I, and I, I think we all got a little taste of that this past week and everybody was smiling when we got together on Monday. Uh, so just really getting, it's the one aspect of Orion that really hasn't been tried out yet for the first to get to do it. I think it's really neat. So that, for me, that, that part's been awesome. And then you guys have also had four and a half months to kind of gel as a, as a crew now and standing in front of this spacecraft. I mean, it, it, it's small, it's obviously bigger than a Soyuz, but you know, you guys are going to be spending quite a bit of time in there in close quarters. How would you say that y'all are gelling as a team? I think the gelling started way before we got assigned to this mission. No, the, the, not I think. The gelling started way before. Reed and Jeremy were selected in 2009, Christina and I in 2013. 
and that's the beginning of that part of this journey. But uh, also, yesterday we got to look inside Orion while it was still open, and we were able to identify a timeout corner. So there's that, just, <laughs> just in case we need it. But you know, it's been a, it's been a blast, and I tell you, we, we say this all the time. It's going to be challenging, but one thing we know for certain, we're going to have. Fun. And you know, I, just to go back yeah. to what you asked Reed as well, the the four and a half months of training, it's actually been very much in line with what I expect because this is very similar to what I got to do the last time. And so some of it is unique, and some of it is also a little analogous to, to what I got to do before, training and, and spending time here and whatnot. So that part has actually been what I expected, and I hope it continues. And Jeremy's such a big guy. He's going to fit in there just fine, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We were talking about that when we were picking out some of our spots, maybe like our favorite sleeping spots. But I will say that seeing the spacecraft together does bond us in a new way because in some ways there are only three other humans that look at this spacecraft the same way as I do and we're all standing here. And that is something that we didn't have before yesterday and it is special. Uh, I think and the bonding goes beyond just the group. We're bonding with a huge team of people. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time, me and the people that we're actually working with. If we have an issue, who we're really gonna be counting on to help solve that issue on the ground. Just meeting these people and forming relationships from you know, the highest levels of leadership all the way down to people who are turning the bolts um, or building those relationships as well. We're really gonna we're really gonna lean on those relationships as we take on some of the big challenges that we know will just come along throughout this program. What's it like to get to see the heat shield kind of th this this thing that's really gonna protect you from these incredibly high temperatures on reentry to get to really see it be put together? Um, I don't know, what's it like to, to watch it all be pieced together bit by bit? I would say it's impressive, and it just reminds you of how hard it is to go to the moon and come back and survive. When you look at this thing, it's wrapped in a lot of insulation to protect this from that, that uh, plasma on the way home. It just reminds you, this is a big deal. It's going to be it's gonna be a risky return to Earth, but it looks the part. Okay, we have about five more minutes. Yep. So a friend of a friend, Christina, asked you in San Diego if you're more excited about seeing the, the moon up close or the Earth from afar. So for the, the rest of you guys, I'm curious, which one is it? Oh. The Earth from afar. But the Earth from the perspective of the moon. So I guess I'm saying both, really. But the Earth from afar, if I had to pick one. Uh, I look at this mission as three orbits of Earth. And that, that first orbit has a 1200 nautical mile apogee, and I'm excited to see Jeremy glue to the window looking back at Earth, and I'm excited for us. That's about four times the, the altitude of the International Space Station, so it's going to be awesome. And then our second orbit is 38,000 miles, and just getting to see the whole planet for the first time. I know there's going to be four faces glued to the window. But then uh, going out, uh, there, there's such a unique trajectory on this where I think we'll really get to see the Earth through the moon, and you'll just see it in a different way than Apollo saw from low lunar orbit. It's almost an accidental uh, blessing there. So I'm really excited to see that the whole moon with the whole Earth behind it will be well. What's the status of the mission patch? Are y'all getting input into that? I don't think I've seen it. I don't know. Who's working on the mission patch? Is anybody working on the mission patch? <laughs> We're working on it. We are working on it. Work in progress. We're working on it. So we, we will make sure everybody uh, enjoys it and everybody will know when it's, when it's time to go Hi, Elizabeth Howell with Space.com. Could each of you talk about what personal experiences you're bringing into this mission that are helping to inform the training, um, getting ready for the moon? I think the big thing that I've noticed so far, like we, we all come from our own unique backgrounds. It's wonderful to have Christina, the perspective she brings is just a little bit different. Uh, which I really appreciate. But there's also a difference that I've noticed. Christina touched on it a few minutes ago. When you know you're on the crew and you're going through this, you do see it all with a different set of eyes. There are things that you care about that are a little bit different than when you're just going through helping design the vehicle and helping test as an astronaut. And I felt that difference. Like the amount that I am invested in this vehicle is enormous. And, and so I think just an entire lifetime of operating things that humans have built and then watching how this works and knowing you're not designing the spacecraft to work just for the four of us. We are helping influence the design of this to help our future astronauts who are gonna have much bigger, much more complex missions. So making this operate as simply as possible for them is really what our focus is. Hey, Brian. 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 H
but we've time for a couple more about him. As a, as a photographer, who's going to take the amazing photos of the moon? Yes. <laughs> We, yeah, we're all very excited about the photography of the moon. That's one of the big science returns that we hope to be a part of. But I think even more so, we're excited to take pictures of other people and each other seeing the moon. Um, that human element, what it really means to view your home planet from afar and to view the moon from up much closer than we can from here. And what that does to someone, um, that's something I'm really excited about. Victor talks about that a lot. Thank you. So you touch on in a second, guys. So, how much input do you have on the design of the capsule? Oh, a lot of the design aspects are set, integrating and finishing the builds of most of these. But how we use them, operational workarounds and constraints, those are things that we're still developing, and, and we're very much going to be involved in that. How they put the crew in, this will be the first time we do that in this vehicle. And uh, we, you know, Jeremy and I were talking about this in the car the other day, about the timeline that it takes to get strapped in. You know, there are medical and operational mission impacts to how long it takes them to strap us in. And that procedure is written, but we're going to have a big influence on how, how it works out for the next crew. And so the implementation is where I think we're going to have the most input, but this will also be the future designs. The spacecraft that aren't being built yet. Okay. But this isn't really, oh, are we all touch? Uh, okay. This isn't really a design input thing, but uh, when I flew Russian Soyuz, which Christine also flew, uh, we spent months and months training how to do a manual return from lower orbit to Earth, and how to get successful at that to be able to pilot that thing home. Uh, I, I studied one PowerPoint for about three hours. I jumped in the simulator, and my first return at Mach 39 from the moon, I hit within one mile of the intended landing site. And so when you, when you think of the Orion folks that have been working on this, and the folks that have developed the controls and displays, to be able to have essentially zero hands-on training and pilot this thing manually back from lunar return re-entry and hit within a mile of your intended landing point is a true testament to the work that we're doing. It's just absolutely amazing. 